What's up, everybody, and welcome to The Comment Writers. I'm your host, Josh Meek, the Uber Geek, and I'm joined, as always, by my good friend, Toby Tobes. How's it going, Toby? Wonderful, Josh. It's a nice, brisk evening where it's actually cold enough in my office that I can see my breath when I talk. Oh, that's a problem. You should <laughs> probably solve that. Uh, we are uh, coming to you once again. We have just watched uh, Common Rider Gotchard episode 19, which is what we're going to be discussing today on the show. Um, so like we did last week, just to explain it again to everybody, if you are listening in the audio version of this podcast, you wouldn't have heard any of this. But if you go uh, either check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash the comment writers, or the YouTube version of our show, uh, right before this, you heard some clips uh, of what of us watching the show. Uh, so if you're interested, you can go check that out. Otherwise, uh, this review will continue uh, un uninterrupted, uh, unabridged. With, without any, unabridged. Thank you. Unbridled. Uh, without any of that stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, if you want to go check that out, go check out the Patreon. But that's that's what we're doing. That's what you just saw. If you are on the YouTube version, so Toby, you should get some heat. I think that's what that's what I'm hearing here. Turn on. Some so heat. the way the house works is my office is the room that's the farthest away from the heat and gets the heat last. And it's a literal icebox in here all the time. And I'm pretty sure that I'm sitting like above the garage, which is obviously freezing cold concrete everywhere. Yep. So I just freeze my ass off every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> my my office is in, it must be like right where the heat starts in the house. Because I have the exact opposite problem where my office gets hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a, a lot of times it gets hot. Like it, it um, I can open curtains and get it colder in here and i leave the door open a lot and, and let some let some cool air in so it's not terrible but definitely heat uh is usually more my problem than than cold in here well i even have like my freaking desktop computer is huge it has all the all the gamer parts in it and it runs <laughs> it runs warm as hell and other times i feel like it's like a mini heater and it like takes care of things yes definitely but for some reason when it's super cold outside it does nothing it just gets worse in here <laughs> the computer's like i give up I'm not doing this anymore uh toby i'm coming to you from a very dark place today that i wanted to talk about a little bit together uh, i have the lights off but um uh no i'm not <laughs> i'm not at that level of dad joke yet uh no we, we talked about it a little bit uh together in, in discord but oh no i know it's just gone already <laughs> you, let me just give you a timeline of my day here so this morning or i guess yesterday i didn't really see it until this morning Yesterday, you had messaged me about making fun of the newest AEW video game. So if you don't know, it's a it's a wrestling company. You and I like wrestling, like watching wrestling. Uh, so we talk about talk about wrestling things once in a while. AEW put out this new this new game where looking at screenshots, it looks looks pretty bad. <laughs> it, looks, um, it looks like good or not good, bad. It looks like old school bad flash video game animation yes 100 from like, from like new grounds like yeah. that 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 tier of quality of drawing so you know i like AEW. i i typically check out most things that they do so i i thought that this looked like crap but i downloaded the game not really knowing what kind of a game it was just to check it out turns out it's an idle game <laughs> and it uh it's it is exactly one of those games. They don't do anything new or interesting. It's a full on like gotcha game, trying to get you to spend money at every turn, uh, watch the numbers go up type thing. Uh, horrible game, but then I got addicted to it today. I got got pretty hooked on it because <laughs> you know so, I, I'm pretty susceptible to numbers going up. I guess <laughs> at eight o'clock was when you fully engaged with my screenshot to you. Yeah, I said this is the this is the official game. It came out this week, blah, blah, blah. Eight o'clock. Josh, Josh says, this looks like shit and laughs. 9.30, Josh says. <laughs> I just says, want to point out, this is going to be a pretty damn <laughs> time. <that I'm> <laughs> 9.30, an hour and a half later, Josh says, I spent a few minutes with the game. It looks a lot better in motion on par with other gotcha games of the same kind of bullshit. So we talk about a little bit more. We talk about better idle games and phone games. I think Josh is done. He sounded like he was bored in his meeting. He was, you know, having a, <laughs> having a nice day, mellowed out a little bit. And then the next one, next timeline thing, 11.15. I'm in a boring meeting, and damn it, this AEW game hooked me. 
uh yeah it's a terrible game but like when i'm sitting there and it's like well like i mean i can just have this open and click on this button every every couple seconds uh and not really pay attention to it i did that for a little bit and then it's like the, you know it still is like the, you see the numbers go up and then they get higher and then like you get new wrestlers and like it's one of those things where like i know exactly what it's psychologically trying to do to me and it's still working and that's so frustrating. <laughs> like, I get it. I see I see all of the wires. I see what this is doing. Um, but it's still effective. Uh, and, then at, and then at 1 o'clock, Josh's final update of the day, because I think he was tired of me bullying him, he tells me about the event that's starting based on things that are canceled. But irrelevant to that, that means in a span of about five hours today, you mocked the thing with me. Yeah. And then slowly throughout five hours, the, the crock pot slow cooker was on. 100%. And, yeah. and by the end of the five hours, Josh is like, this is my favorite game. He's probably ready to throw well, money at it. No, I'm definitely never spending money. So it's so it's so. Don't blatant. say that, Don. No, no, yeah, no, you're no, right. No. You're right. You're right. By, by, <laughs> by next week, I'm going to be like, don't be poor. I don't have any more money. I put it all in AEW Rise to the Top. Or whatever. The I bought the battle pass for $20. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. That was the thing that made me realize I'm never spending money on this game. Was you get in it, and the first thing it presents you with is like, buy this battle pass for twenty dollars. Like, that is so ridiculous. Like, even the Marvel Snap battle pass is only ten. Like, twice as much, twenty dollars. And then it, it constantly, Joey, <laughs> is popping up and interrupting your gameplay to try to get you to buy various packs that are quote great deals that all begin at at least ten dollars and go up to the highest I've seen is like forty dollars. <laughs> So it's definitely one of those ones that are like, I know it's new. And I know they need money, but there's some, I mean, I'm sure everyone has played an idle game and knows some of them are skewed so insane with like your first two days of pricing. Cause it, like yeah. it wasn't, it might've been the office one when I played it a bunch and, or some other one, like they'd be like, Oh, you just started this new event. It's your second day. By the way, if you want the best jump start on this event, Get this fifty dollar bundle where you get one of the main characters you might need plus some extra shit. Yep, this has like, all that. Yeah, right, all it's that like too. I paid you for twenty four hours, and now you're asking me for fifty dollars already. Yep, and I'm sure. I mean, and of course, I know people buy. People it. do it. Do yeah, it. I'm sure people but do it. It's insane. It's one definitely too much. My my, I do know that my arc on these games is usually pretty short lived. If I if I start playing one, it's usually like pretty exciting at the be- at the beginning because a lot of things happen quickly then eventually you get to the point where it's like, okay, then they start giving out the rewards further and further apart. And like, they really start stretching it to try to get you to give them money. And usually that's the point where I'm just like, okay, I'm bored. I'm not going to play this anymore. (laughs) So like, like the games usually get like a couple days on my phone and then get deleted. So that's probably where this is going. But like, yes, it was just so hilarious that it was like, well, this is dumb. Well, I guess I'm playing this now. I guess this is (laughs) my next several days. is just playing this stupid idol game. And then it gets worse, Toby, even worse than this. During during the day today, you and I were reminiscing about how good WWE Supercard was. So uh, about an hour ago, I downloaded Supercard again. <laughs> I haven't so started some, it yet. So somehow you went hardcore into wrestling phone games today. I somehow. guess so. I guess that's what I did today. Yeah. Uh, so someone someone save me. <laughs> it's going bad. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it is a short lived dalliance. So we. <laughs> I, I have faith in you to find something else to do because you're you're like me sometimes in the sense where you bounce around these things a lot. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. so I'm hoping we're like a half bounce away right now from a little, <laughs> little more sanity in your life. I think so. I think we need it. Yeah. Um, speaking of more sanity in my life, Toby, let's jump into uh, something that keeps me sane, which is uh, emails. That was going to be my guess. I'm glad that you got there because yeah. I would have said emails and you're like, no, no one knows an email. That would have been upsetting. So I'm it glad. Been. Yeah. yeah. Totally. We, we got an email this week. Um, well, we got uh, well, first we got a spam email, which I'm not going to read. Uh, but second, we got an email from our friend Shane. We found the videos of you and your shame. <laughs> We're gonna. I'm gonna send this video to seven people unless you pay a uh, Bitcoin me at L seven nine one lowercase Q. Actually, this one uh, is asking if I would like to acquire the quantum computing customer list, and I would not. I would not like that. Wait, that I sounds don't. like a good list. We could we could <laughs> we could show stuff to him. I don't think that in in the Venn diagram of people who watch Japanese children's TV shows and people who are into quantum computing, I don't think those circles overlap that much. Like, I'm not saying that's a it's a it's a completely, you know, unoverlapping circles, but I'm just saying there's not enough of an overlap for us to 
to warrant it. That, that That's possible. Yeah. Uh, but if you would like it, Toby, you get their uh, name, title, email, phone, company name, company URL, company physical address, SIC code, industry, and specialty, revenue, and employee. I feel like I could do some damage with that phone number list. We could definitely get some new some new uh, listeners that way. So we're, we'll talk. We'll, we're, we'll we'll put a pin in this and we'll discuss it later. In the I love lot. the concept of cold calling to advertise your common writer podcast. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, "Hi, have you heard the good news about, about the common writers?" <laughs> oh, you haven't. Oh, you're having dinner. Okay, yeah. No, you're. Uh, yep. I'll take you off my no call list. Sure thing. No, you don't. You don't give it. See, this is why you'll never. You would never be good at this. You don't give up after the first. No, you keep That's true. going. That's true. You really you know, you know if you want. I know you, uh, we're about to sit down for dinner, but one of the things we should talk about is you know there's a character named Hodoro, and his family has a fantastic dinners all the time <laughs> because Hodoro is a good good chef. I understand you. Th- I understand you think you don't need a podcast based on a Japanese children's TV show, but what if I asked you? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me if this sounds like a good value. <laughs> Do you enjoy heroic stories? Do you enjoy <laughs> lovable heroes that always seem to work out? I love that <laughs> in, in this role play of sorts. You're like, okay, I'm going to hang up the phone now. I'm going to have to do is go, Josh, you don't quit yet. And right away you're like, do you love children's stories about heroics? So <laughs> you're right back in. <laughs> I was, you know, I was, I was trying to figure out what I would do. I was trying to figure out my script, you know? There you go. We yeah, got to write it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Shade sent us in an email. <laughs> Shade says, hey there, the thing we've been waiting to fina- to happen finally happened, uh, which is Kudo has her gotcha. We got to see meat it. Meat cream puffs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kudo ate some meat cream puffs. And uh, yes, in episode 19 here, we finally get to see uh, Kudo finally henshin become her full common Rider form. Of course, that happened in the movie, uh, as, as Shade mentions here, but now... The movie is leaving theaters and we finally get it in the series. Uh, So Shade says, to start things off, I saw something that Toby could appreciate, so I'd like to bring it up. (laughs) Apparently in the upcoming game, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, there is a reference to Kamen Rider X-Aid, more specifically (laughs) Kamen Rider X-Aid's transformation pose. So let me let me show this to you so you can you can react to it live here. Um, So. There it is. Take take a watch at that little uh, side by side or top to bottom video because <laughs> it's pretty great. I, I I just looked at the picture first. I was like, I don't get it, but if it's a video, yeah, yeah, clearly it's a video. So this is um, Ichiban Poundmate. So it's like a delivery service in the game, and when he answers a call uh, for the delivery service, he does a henshin transformation pose <laughs> that is exactly copied from X Aid. So I'm going to. I, I will respect this video. That is hilarious. I want to point out that Poundmates were in the other Like a Dragon game. And I don't. I know he had a dramatic dialing. I don't know if it was specific to this, but now I feel like I have to research that while you talk. But that is yeah. hilarious either way. That's fantastic. It, it is that dramatic dialing you're talking about. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and then Shade says, also, if you could tell me what episode you're on with x that would be nice for my next email. Uh, so we are on episode... What thirty? We've watched up to thirty-two. I think is what we're we've currently watched at. up to thirty-one. We will be watching thirty-two later. Right. So at, at the time of you hearing this email, we will have watched thirty-two and thirty-three. <laughs> so starting on, <laughs> yeah, right, right. So up we're through right, thirty-three should be safe. We're right in the sweet spot. It's fantastic, indeed. Jade says last episode we saw the debut of Fire Gotchard, but what got me even more excited was the new insert theme by Ryder Chips. Ryder Chips is a band that makes music for Common Rider ever since the 2000s. They haven't done anything for Common Rider since Geo, and I'm glad they're back. For some songs that you guys may recognize, they made Geo's final form theme, Next New World, which, yes, I remember that from Connor Geo, and, Toby, x and Ghost's movie theme, Battle Game, B-A-T-T-L-E-G-A-M-E. Um, so that might be a thing you you remember from that movie. They, they spell out Battle Game in the song. I like that, B A T T L E G A M E. I'll have to look um, back into that at that point or afterwards. Both are great songs. And yes, the uh, the, the new song the, that they're playing <laughs> when Fire Gotchard shows up is also very good. So good on Ryder Chips. Very, very good songs. I wanna, uh, I'm going to confirm real quick for everyone that in the okay. last and then the other Yakuza game, the Poundmates summon was not a henshin. 
So that's definitely new to the new one. And I will I'll have to confirm or agree that it definitely looks like x aids at this point. I'm very excited that we introduced you to x aid before this game came out. So that way now you can like combine your two your two interests. all my loves slam yeah. together <laughs> uh shane says those those songs uh are in uh, in his opinion some of their best works uh now that majade is finally in the show uh which is kudos common writer form uh let's have another pr- pronunciation le- lesson shall we uh somehow even though i have literally written out how to pronounce the name there were still some confusions gosh dang it man yeah, we're not we're not good at this, Shane. We're not good at I this. don't even read. Like, what do you want from me? <laughs> Shane says, last time you guys read the phonetics of Majade as Majedo, uh, which is how you would read it in Japanese. However, the word yeah. Majade has nope. the word what? We already what? we already won. We already won. We read it, we we said it like they say in Japanese. We win. Uh however, the word Majade has the word <laughs> jade, which is taken from English. Japanese people pronounce the word jade as jado because their language works differently. So the proper English pronunciation of majade would be majade, similar to how gachard would be pronounced gachado because of gotcha. So, yeah, like, I mean, I guess, yeah, that makes sense. I I also tend to, <laughs> like, oftentimes I am saying, like, in my head, the way that I hear it in the show often too. So like I end up uh, doing the Japanese pronunciation in my head when I'm talking about these things, which is probably offensive, but um, I understand the explanation here that it should be Majade, even though we're going to hear in the show Majedo, <laughs> uh, but, but I'm probably going to mess it up again. I'm, that, that's all I'm saying. It's probably going to happen. Uh Jesus. So last time while talking about Kudo being the first female secondary writer, I saw you guys were pretty confused about the concept of secondary writers, which makes sense because like all common writer classifications, it does get a little confusing. So, okay, strap in. Shade gets into this here because uh, you and I talked about a couple different series and like who is the secondary writer and who counts and, and how does it all how does it all work? So Shade says, so what is a secondary writer? The simple answer would be that it's a writer that has the secondary focus in the show but it doesn't always work like that. The regular character writing tropes for a secondary writer can be kind of like a sixth ranger in a Power Power Rangers or Sentai series. They're always the cool, somewhat edgy rival that's at odds with the main character and challenges the main character to be better. And because of this trope, sometimes a non-secondary character can even feel more like a secondary than the secondary themselves. For example... That's that's a a lot of secondaries. That That is a lot of... (laughs) For example, a common misconception in Geats is that Buffa is the secondary character of the show because of how much of the story progressed because of him. But he's not. He's not even the tertiary. Tycoon is supposed to be the secondary, but Buffa hits so many of the secondary rider tropes that people naturally thought he was one. Uh, Same case with Spanner at the beginning of Gotchard. Dude was basically a glaring sign that said, I'm the secondary rider, but then nope. Even till now, it's pretty confusing to determine what makes a secondary writer outside of Toei saying who it is. But generally, you can kind of determine who's the secondary by how much focus they have in the toys, merch side of things, because they'll always be the second most marketable character in the show. Unless your character explodes in popularity and you get to be in multiple movies and miniseries, but that's a story for another day. Oh, and one more thing. The Japanese catchphrase, the the Japanese Pokemon catchphrase is Pokemon Geto Daze which technically translates to get Pokemon, but in the way it's said, it has more excitement in it. So it's like, let's get some Pokemon. Uh, I'm one of the kids who grew up with Pokemon fan subs, so I had to say this. <laughs> <laughs> so secondary writers, I it feels uh, overly complicated and and too classifying to me. Like, like, like I get in, in, in Geats, like, Kawa was the secondary writer. I think that makes sense. Like he definitely is the writer with like the the most focus outside of Geats, right? Like he is in a lot of cases he feels like the main character in in, in some portions of the show. Um but then at the same time like Buffa also is a character who has like huge portions of that show. He's a real focal point. He's like the secondary person who's the most focused on. So it's like I don't know, kind of doesn't matter like Buffa is also super popular and is the focal point of a lot of their 
like extra mini series and movies and and DVDs that they're making too. So like he clearly is the one who's getting the popularity outside of the main series too. So like I don't know. He he sort of like fits in that role. He he has the attitude like you talked about Jade and now he's got the popularity. So like I don't know. Like kind of works. Kind of counts. I think it's just weird that like their move is this person is a secondary one because we decided it. Yeah. And <laughs> what, like, I guess to use the Geats whole show example, obviously Geats would be the first that's his show and whoever else. But when the other three of them are all on the screen, just as much basically. Yeah. And it's like all it's like, the story is like all of their story and not just, I mean, it's mainly Geats's, but the rest of the other kids are just all there together the whole time. It seems weird to be like, no, this one specifically is like the second person. This is one you really need to focus on. But just doesn't. I don't know. Like yeah, said, I think it's, just, it's weird labels and them being and Toei being like, no, this is the person that you're going to respect the most. You're going to like <laughs> them the best. Seems like the best way to get people to not agree with you and to make their own decision. And yeah, I agree. Do those kind of things. It, it also feels like like some series lend itself better to the classification than others. Like Geats, I don't think does because, like you said, like there are four characters there that all get a ton of screen time <laughs> that all the 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 um the case could be made for them being like popular enough high enough in the in the the screen time to be the secondary writer um but like a show like like geo there there are two main writers in that show there's geo and there's gates and like it's very clear which one is the secondary <laughs> writer um so like yeah i think i think some shows it's very clear it makes perfect sense it, the, that terminology makes sense and then other shows they're just not written that way they're not written in that same that same vibe like x aids kind of an example too where it's like yes i know that heroes the secondary writer but like again they're like they're they're like a trio essentially most of the time right like there are um yeah i think i think snipe like kind of is close enough like he's tertiary yes but like he's he's more elevated than some of the tertiary writers that we see too so uh yeah i don't think it i don't think it fits a hundred percent all the time this is why we don't need labels, man. You're holding yeah. everybody back. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Totally. Uh, yeah. And thanks for the, <laughs> thanks for the Pokemon catchphrase update. That's uh that's good to know. All right. That's our emails for this week. So again, Shade, thanks very much for writing in uh, with all that information. And of course, if you want to be like Shade, you can send us in an email. You can send that to cast at common writer sucks.com. <clears throat> so Toby, let's jump into discussing Gotchard episode 19 here. Um, let's do it. The latest and the greatest. The latest and the greatest. Of course, as we talked about in the email section, the big headline here is that Kudo finally got her transformation. She finally uh, got her gotcha and became Kamen Rider Majade in this in this episode. So I guess, yeah, the, the big overarching plot line here is that now the kids are sort of on the run they are no longer official alchemy students they have rejected the uh the giving back of the rings that was requested they've rejected the fact that they were going to be mind wiped so they're they're sort of rebels but it's not quite sitting too well with kudo she likes to follow the rules toby <laughs> the, the rebel base still posted up in hodoro's hodoro's mom's or his family restaurant they tuck themselves in the corner while the restaurant's open with all the wonderful other wacky characters we always see visit them for lunch. <laughs> that was so good. I love the fact that the the little alliance that they formed is just in the restaurant while it's running. <laughs> <laughs> so hilarious and cute. And the fact that the mom's like, now nah, you guys can stick around. It's it's all. It's so good. And especially later when we when we find out that the reason they're basically allowed there while the business is open and everything else. Is because the mom just makes them work. Like they yep. run, they run food to the tables. They help out. So basically, like mom wisely got the kids into something, but it's a trade off. They have to work <laughs> if they're gonna take up table space. Yeah, she's like, I'll give up that table in the corner because I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a bunch of extra work because they're just gonna be hanging around all the time. It's perfect. <laughs> my damn That's son so always, my damn son always leaves and leaves his friends here. I might as well make them do something. Yeah. <laughs> What a weird vibe for that mom. Yeah, it's like, yeah, they're here more than he is, but you know, whatever. They put up this weird sign that says Kitchen Itch No Say Alliance. I don't really get it, but, um, you know, free labor, so whatever. 
I'll, I'll, I'll let my wacky son have his fun. Yeah, put up a <laughs> sign, buddy. It's okay. Put up a sign, cover the windows. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's sort of the vibe here. The um, the 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 push and pull, I guess, between like I, you know, I like to follow rules, but like this whole concept that we're heading down into is is t- all about breaking the rules, right? Like I. I'm breaking the alchemy rules. I'm not listening to my teachers. And she struggles with that internally. She's going to be the worst kind of rebel. <laughs> Until she finally, Toby finds out or decides for herself that she's going to follow her own rules. <laughs> she's going to make up her own rules. And that's when, like, like as if magic, she, she, uh, her ring transforms, her driver appears, and she's able to finally hench it. And... Uh, yeah. Speaking of her henshin and her whole costume and everything, I think she has my favorite henshin ever. Like you and I were saying, like it's her henshin is so it's like mellow, graceful, ballerina esque of just like yeah. it exudes like class. And then she just she magically turns into a sun and unicorn hybrid. And of course those are two majestic <laughs> things as well. <laughs> totally. Yeah, I think I think the word that I used when you and I were, were, were watching it together was clean. Like it just feels <laughs> very like very smooth and very clean and everything feels um like it like it should be. It all flows together. <laughs> Where you watch like so you want you watch some of the guys henshin and like intentionally so, but it's very like forceful and like jerky motions and everything's aggressive and and yeah, she's like like very smooth and laid back and yeah, very very cool. To, uh, to compare it to the the goofy joke of Ichiban, uh, the Yakuza Ichiban, uh-huh. and uh, M, X, Aids, Henshin's, whatever. I know more times than not the the guys, when they're doing it, are usually like mid-battle, and it gets more aggressive. But M's is very like, I'm out of breath, and throwing as much effort into this <laughs> as possible, and just giant gestures, and half sloppy looking, and everything else. So like him specifically compared to hers is just miles apart. Yeah, totally. Uh, I found it very interesting. So I I had mostly tried to like not pay too close attention to like the movie uh, spoilers and stuff. So like obviously we'd seen what she looked like, but like, you know, I wanted to take it in in the show really. So one thing I hadn't noticed before was that her driver is different than Hodoro's. So she has what's called the alchemist driver is, is what they, they name it in the show today. And it's cool looking. Like it's got a place on the top where you scan the ring. Um, and it, you know, well, it's a driver. So it looks very, very toy like, but like it, it is neat looking. It's got like the, it's got like sort of like matte white plastic over top of like the orange parts like Hoda Rose has. It's got like a big like triangle in the middle. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's like a cool sort of like take on, the the gotcha driver um that sort of fits her pretty well when she's henchin it looks really good on that on that suit everything looks good with her whole situation there other than i still think her i believe in myself i have the power ring upgrade goes from her cool stylish metal actual alchemy ring ring to just it looks like the cheapest plastic toy ever that you would get out of like a gacha yeah, in Japan, just like twenty five cents. Oh shit! I won a prize. Look, it's a it's a common rider ring kind of thing. I understand why they had to switch it because, like, when you buy that when you buy that driver, it's gonna come with that ring because the whole henchin process is scanning the ring on the driver. So like, it's gonna come with the toy version of the ring. So like, that's why they switch her to that in the show so it matches the kids playing at home. Uh, but yeah, you, you go from like. My dad gave me this really special orange ring. I was like, and now it's just a big hunk of plastic. Go, <laughs> All right, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty funny, pretty funny concept, especially there's the fact that like she physically moves the ring to a different finger, but then the entire ring just transforms anyway. Like you, <laughs> you, you kind of feel like it could just switch fingers while it transforms. <laughs> just right. go ahead and do, yeah, just go ahead and do that for me. Fine. Uh, and then my favorite part of her henchin, we'll talk about her costume here in a second. My favorite part of her henchin is as she's doing it, at least in, the, in, in this episode, there's this like chant voice line going on or like singing as she's doing it. That's like, as above, so below, as above, <laughs> so below. 
She's, she's really summoning some evil with this is really what is really the vibe here. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I want just like a clean, I'm sure people will get it from the driver and stuff too if it's there. I want just like a clean line of that so I can just like put it under thing. As above, so below. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then of course, yes, like you said, she uses the unicorn, she uses the sun, and she henchins. What do you think about Kamen Rider Majade? The, the look of the suit. Again, it's just her whole presentation, for lack of a better word, is just very c- classy, calm. Uh, hers in general, I th- think looks like it could almost be a Geats upgrade. Just a little more science yeah. a little more technology, futuristic-ish. But she has, like, at most, the only reason you even think it might be still be a unicorn is she has a very small like unicorn a horn on her head but everything else is just slick white out geats style um costume i think you said there's not a ton of a lot of the costumes have the black jumpsuit on or like the black yeah. onesie spandex thing and hers isn't really like that at all hers is yeah. just all with feel- the whited out silver look yeah i feel like a vibe that and i think we've talked about it before on the show here maybe in you know, a season ago, but um, I think a vibe in recent common writers is very much like it's a black spandex suit that then we've pasted things onto. And like that usually looks pretty good. I think zero one is like the perfect example of this where it's a cool looking suit. But then when you really look at it, you realize it's just a dude wearing black spandex. And then it has like a shoulder pad and like knee pads and thigh pads. Um, and this does not have that vibe whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, it it looks more like it is, you know, um, a suit of armor, like it should like it should look like it, it looks very cool uh, and really from like all angles, too, because she does a lot of flipping and kicking and stuff. And it, it looks looks pretty sweet. I also think a common Rider suit with heels looks really good, too. <laughs> <laughs> Josh like, just found his fetish. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not in that way. I just think like it really adds to the whole like unicorn vibe that the suit has. Uh, and it makes the kicks look really cool, too. Uh, so I'm. Uh, yeah, very into the whole the whole look here for sure. And the other thing with her her suited form, I get you really can't tell like who the suit actor is, obviously, but even the suit actor as well during the fights, any moves that uh, transform Kudo does, it all just looks so smooth. She looks like like a almost like a fighting game character. Just, yeah. just like all smooth combos, like the kicks over the back of her head to kick the guy in the face, and her whole her whole presentation, her whole henshin presentation is, I think, for me, one of my favorites of all of them so far. Yeah. She just seems wildly different, and it's cool that Quiet Shy Kudo is secretly like <laughs> just a, a badass. I mean, we always totally. said she seemed like a badass, but like henshin Kudo is definitely a badass. Um the the thing that came to mind before the fighting style was like like almost like soccer kick inspired but now you know you saying fighting character yeah it made me realize that it's way more of like like a like a break dance inspired thing like it's sort of like on the ground rotating flipping upside down kicking like um more more like flowing motion to motion which is yeah it was where like the fighting game character thing comes from i think for sure um very different than than hodoro's uh in suit movements um and yeah i appreciate that they are different it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's just like a carbon copy of what he's doing so that's that's pretty cool i hope that continues as we see more of her that she continues to feel like a unique character in costume um because that's pretty neat and of course aside from her whole transformation (laughs) her showing up uh another thing to talk about pertaining to her in this episode is we get more interaction with her and Atropos, the littlest abyssal sister. So uh, Atropos gets sent out with uh, the newest Malgum, which is a Cerberus-based Malgum, so a multi-headed dog character. She has a little flute that can control the dog. So obviously the first thing she does is she tries to sick the dog uh, on Kudo <laughs> instead, of, <laughs> instead of on Hodoro. Uh, and then with, at some with, point, the, with the line first of, can you do me a favor and die today? <laughs> yeah, can, can, you, can you die today? 
whis- whispered in Kudo's ear. It's pretty good. Uh, and then, of course, at some point in this uh, fight, she gets sort of an errant shot her direction. It hits her flute, her golden flute, and her golden f- flute kind of fuses with her arm. So then she can't really move her arm. She's sort of like pinned to the ground. And now she can no longer control the Cerberus, which which turns on her and comes to attack her. And while she is gold armed, the that little actress, that little monster of a child <laughs> manages to do literally. I mean, it's not like the best. I find like the best dead arming ever, but like a champ, you would literally think that that kid's arm was either completely numb or actually encased in golden heavy. She does a fantastic job of just letting her arm droop and not moving at all while she's trying to move around. Yeah, it's super, super convincing. Like I, I bought into that instantly and you know, all she's doing is like putting it on the ground and then like rotating around it or like pretending like it's super heavy. Um, but yeah, like she does great <laughs> for, <laughs> for, for that whole process. And it's a very cool uh, sequence too. Like as she like has to dodge the, the attacks coming in while her arm is just like, um, as if it is like Thor's hammer stuck to the ground. That <laughs> yeah, she's there trying, you go, exactly. Trying to lift. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty neat. It, uh, I, 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 cont- I continue to be impressed by her, you know, throughout the show. I think she's, I think she's a great character. I think that actress is really impressive for clearly how young she is. <laughs> like they're, they're asking a lot of her in the show to, to do various things and play various roles. And, and I think it's been all very uh, impressive so far. And of course, that gave Kudo a chance to 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 save her, um, to step in the way, take care of the Malgam, and to bring up the fact that that previously Kudo had said, "You just want to be my friend." Uh, <laughs> we went back to, to the we went back to the the old joke, or the old her her old disarming of the kid with the whole vibe. This time of you were lonely when you were little, yeah, and I was lonely too. I get it. And it's just always great because Tropo gets so, so frustrated every time that Kudo actually relates to her. Because yeah. we'll assume Kudo is probably 100% correct. That's why she gets upset. But it's just, it's always such a weird tie to keep those two together. But they always do so good with it. Yeah, and it continues to make sense, though. Like, you know, obviously she is a little girl essentially growing up without a father now she's got her like father figure back in her life, but he's clearly a monster. <laughs> um, so yeah, like you know, two two girls who like don't have a dad really in their life. Like obviously Kudo had a good one for a while <laughs> and then <laughs> and then disappeared, and, and Tropo never did. But like yeah, more, they're more alike than than they probably would admit. And um, I, I think it's neat having a hero character who can relate to a villain w- while the villain is still a villain, like. I know that you're bad. I know you're not going to do the right thing, but I can commiserate with wh- how you're feeling and how you got here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I think that's that's a neat vibe that the two of them have too. Uh, obviously, it's going to lead to, you know, Atropos turning good at some point. <laughs> that's where yeah, we're, that's going to be. That's where we're building to, but um, hopefully, that's not for a long time. <laughs> hopefully, that's a very like tail end of the series thing, but but we'll see. And so tied to that, when they, if, when, whatever, they become friends, uh, in the end of this episode, tied to that, uh, the fake dad, Mr. Gold himself, was like, oh my god, I'm so sad that your arm got hurt. I never, I never wanted anything that bad to happen to you. I would never want you to get hurt. I was getting all creepy about it. <laughs> and one of the other sisters, not the one that has her stomach out, the other sister. I don't uh, know which one's which. Le- Lechesis, I think. Okay. Something like that. So she's in the background and like secretly listening to the conversation. And you just see her like seething, like either in the sense of. I I couldn't tell if it was in the sense of you asshole, you almost got my little sister killed. Or if it was in the sense of you don't talk to us like this. You let us get our asses kicked and laugh about it. And you just baby the littlest baby metal. So that's a hard vibe to tell of who of the three of them is getting mad when at which yeah. ones and who's doing the splitting and all that. But it's definitely it's primed and ready. It's building. It's all those things. 
I, I think you had you pointed out that that Lachesis was also the one who like maybe got the most upset ab- at, about the like calling them dolls thing. Um, so yeah, we're calling maybe them dolls. She- and then I was thinking about too in this episode in the beginning when they're palling around with the the monster before he becomes the uh, Cerebus thing. I think she's the one that got thrown across the room too. No, no, no. I think it was, that was that's the other one, the one with her that had her belly out <laughs> before. Was it? Yeah, right, so yeah, yeah. I'm gonna check while we're talking. But at that point, then again, as we talk about these things, it usually helps. That makes more sense that the two older sisters get the shit beat out of them, and no one cares. But when the littlest one remotely gets hurt, all of a sudden it's, oh my god, you're so precious. Who would ever want to hurt you? I'm so sorry. So definitely, there's now they have resentment yeah. from two of them. For the situation so just one that's true yeah that i guess that that makes a lot of sense that that <laughs> her vibe then yeah would be like well okay i i watched my other sister literally get tossed against the <laughs> wall from across the room and you didn't care and now the, the the little girl sort of you know kind of brings this on herself and then then he's like doting over her <laughs> there, there certainly is um there is some uh <laughs> some upsetness going on between all of the sisters there is some some dissension in the ranks for sure also you were right the the belly the belly shirt one was wearing her finest uh alchemy student garbs today but she was definitely the one that got thrown across the room by the zombie went the zombie man when he was hungry yeah that that, that is a shocking scene like <laughs> she just gets launched and like hits that wall so hard uh did not expect that that came out of nowhere yeah, and no, also, and no one cared. No one cared. Yeah, no one cared. Also, the the hilarity of, uh, you know, the, the zombie guy shows up and then instantly a plate of wings appears in front of him that he just smushes his face into, <laughs> is is pr- pretty pretty great too. <laughs> uh, I continue to be just just grossed out by all of those uh, those little dolls, those little um, the little voodoo Malgum guys that uh, that he has. Just just Josh's nightmare is gonna last forever. Yeah. Very disgusting. Uh, the two more things I wanted to hit on here that are kind of important things that happened in this episode. Uh, first is we get some more, um, I guess we'll say FaceTime with Professor Minato. So the big question right now with him is, is he is he pure bad or is he a good guy and he's just having to go along for some reason? Uh, we get him interacting with kudo a couple times the first time is visually maybe one of the coolest scenes i've seen in gotcha so far where he uses his alchemy to sort of mind control everyone on this big long path and he walks them all to the side leaving just kudo in 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 front of him walking down the path towards him like so cool and such a cool representation of his power (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like I'm just going to sweep everyone else away as if it's nothing so that you and I can have a conversation. Uh, I thought that that was really, really cool. And especially in that scene too, it was extra funny because all the extras that were in the scene or like the people that were moved to the side just to walk off, they all just kept walking. So they're all like leaning against a railing next to the water, just kind of walking against a railing until the whole yeah. scene was over. And it's yep. like great too. And I, I thought in this scene and definitely in the next one, he does a really good job of like being emotionless, but like giving you just enough emotion that you can read into it if you want to. So like <laughs> we talked about it before, like he does a really good job of like kind of looking like he just cried, which I think is totally <laughs> intentional. Um, and he especially so in the, in the first scene, of course, Kudo's like, hey, I'm not I'm not going to come back but you know they have this big thing back and forth about rules and following them and your dad would have wanted you to and in the second scene it's very similar to the first they meet again and kudo's like no i'm making my own rules this time and i'm not gonna come back to the alchemy class and he does this super super barely perceivable like smile where basically he's like kind of like i'm proud of you you could almost tell (laughs) and then he instantly is like buddy (laughs) yeah exactly and he's like okay you're following your own path but next time I see you, I'm taking that ring from you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I I love this version of Minato. He's 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 fun and he's evil. <laughs> I like I like I like everything he's doing. I I almost like I I know we're gonna build to where he's a good guy again. Clearly, the fact that like 
the fact that Hodoro is bringing it up, I think means it's it's happening. Um, but I hope we get evil Monado for for a little while longer at least because <laughs> he's so good at it. And then the last thing I wanted to touch on here is uh, what's going on with Spanner. So uh, Spanner and his um, mom slash professor. <laughs> um, what was her name? Like Hyoka, I think is, is her name. Um, they, they, they meet to eat and he kind of catches her up on sort of like what's, what's happening uh, with the whole, you know, kids and with the alchemy and stuff like that. And then later they're spying and see that, of course, Hodoro can, can henchin, and now Kudo can also henchin as well. Um, Spanner mostly just seems, like, upset that she gets to henchin, now he doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get to be a common writer, but his professor slash mom uh, tells him, like, hey, can you steal those drivers? So they're clearly, clearly looking to take those drivers for their own personal research, um, where kind of before I was thinking that maybe they were going to be fully on the side of the alchemy kids it seems like maybe they're still this sort of like third party that is is out for their own good so more to more to be figured out i guess with them <laughs> plenty of time they, they, oh, they just have the best meals together at this point they're just they're just here to eat some food make <laughs> some stuff look good and then we all have a party they're, they're, they're just the lunch club uh and then of course our episode ends where we find out that um, Kudo making her own rules also applies to uh, making up the rule that she gets to pick the dessert because she's the one who took down the Kemi. The <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. It is a good deal. And it was like she had a, many good moments this episode, but the, the her eating her dessert one was fantastic because she really just jammed her face into a fruit tart and then yep. had like the icing or whipped cream or the hell's on a fruit tart. I don't know. She had it like all over her face and was like laughing and smiling. And it's really, I feel like it's rare. They actually show Kudo actively happy about something like happy, happy about something. Definitely. And this was definitely one of the times where like, she was just living her best life, smashing her food in the cake. Which is, it's fitting. Like, I mean, like she, she sort of freed herself this episode, right? Like, like she was torn about following the rules and like, she was all tied up in, I want to be an alchemist, but my dad's a traitor. So she both like decided that she'd make up her own rules and found out that her dad wasn't a traitor after all this episode. She is a free being now. <laughs> she, can, <laughs> she can stuff her face into tarts all she wants. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's, that's very cool. Very cute. All right. I think that, I think that wraps up maybe our discussion of, uh, Gotcha 19. Toby, what are your thoughts on the episode? I want more transformed Kudo because it seems cool. Uh, the baby metal trio having some infighting or at least in resentment. I hope they do something with sooner rather than later just so it starts. But that's set up wonderfully. And Hodro is still a big goof. <laughs> totally. Uh, yeah, I think I think my thoughts are, are uh, pretty similar there. I Really loved transformed Kudo. Want to see a whole lot more of it. Um, definitely, definitely let her blossom into that secondary rider position and let me see a ton more of her. Uh, I thought this was a really good monster this week. I liked the the Cerberus a lot. Uh, I thought that that was very cool and a neat little gimmick with the uh, pan flute controlling him thing. And uh, yeah, I, I like the like you said the the dynamic of the bad guys is really cool and interesting. Monado is coming at it from a cool place. Uh, the Garion guy is creepy and awful, and I hate him. And the sisters are in a really interesting place. They've got cool stuff going on with, like, are you going to turn? Are you not? What are your allegiances here? So lots lots more going on than just, like, one-dimensional villains, which is always uh, appreciative, for sure. So cool episode. I like this one. and uh, I'm excited about seeing more. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for us for this week. Um, once again, if you want to uh, check out the Patreon, we would love for you to do that for just three bucks a month. You get access to all of our bonus content, which is all of our um, watch and react series where we watch uh, old Common Rider episodes. You get to watch those along with us, hear our thoughts and comments as we go. So right now we are watching through X-Aid, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, pretty, pretty deep into that right now. 
<clears throat> you also now are um, starting to get the episodes that we watch together of of Gotchard too. So uh, each of those that we do, we'll put those up on the Patreon too, so so you can check those out. And uh, you get occasional Ramblecast, and you get access to the Discord as well, so you can join our our server and chat along with us there. So it's patreon.com slash the comment writers. Check that out. And of course, send us an emails. We love getting emails from all of you. Uh, send those over to cast at commonwritersucks.com. Again, that is cast at commonwritersucks.com. Uh, so those are all the spiels. Um, Toby, where can the people find you on the internet? On Twitter, it's at Life of Tobes. On YouTube, it's Tobes Plays. And also right now I'm looking at Toku Collectibles, and I want everyone to know you can pre-order a Common Rider Godchard orange, orange Sterling Silver Alchemist ring for only $185. $185. That's insane. Um, <laughs> I mean, no it's, one... I mean it's, it's Sterling Silver. It's a real yeah, ring. It's a real ring, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hopefully, you know, if you do that, hopefully you have that money to spend. That's all, I, that's all I'll say. <laughs> Uh, for me, you can find me at Pretty Dece Josh in most places. Um, I am on Blue Sky at meek.lol. And um, <laughs> yeah, check me out on, on YouTube at Pretty Dece as well. Uh, that's where all of these episodes actually get posted. So again, that's going to wrap us up for this week. Check out the Patreon. Send us an email if you would like. Uh, otherwise, enjoy your time. Enjoy living, everybody. Get out there. And uh, we'll be back here next week to talk about Gotchard 19. Uh, or sorry, 20 at that point. That's we what we just did. Just like 20. We're going to watch 20. Uh, but until then, have a great week, everybody. Don't play idle games. Don't play idle games.